Alright, in three, two, one. Hey what's up guys, it's Jinan and the first clip that you saw was about this screen replacement part getting shot by this bullet which came out of a coil gun which is on this RC car. I made a separate video about how I made just the car so I'm just gonna link that down below but I'm just gonna go over it. So the entire body is made out of flat pieces of metal. It has two motors in the back and without any of the extra stuff the top speed max is about 17 miles per hour which is okay I guess. And for the coil gun system it uses 8 capacitors. Each of them is rated for 450 volts and 330 EF. The charging circuit takes less than 20 seconds to charge all the capacitors to 400 volts. The the coil starts off with the first level of winding instead of a plastic barrel. For the trigger, it uses a thyrus strip because without it, it looks like this. By the way, it went through the board. And with the thyristor, it looks like this. But it needs a switch to turn it on. So the servo on the right does that and the servo on the left turns on the charging circuit. There's a buck module for the laser pointer and there's a 6 channel receiver which basically makes everything work together and that's basically it. That's all the specs and stuff. Now the reason for me to do this project is I just wanted to complete something that I never completed but still find it interesting. If you look back 4 years you will find a similar project where I used some servos to control an airsoft gun which is glued and mounted on this RC car thing. There was supposed to be a third part of this series but that never happened because it took me too long to save money for a transmitter receiver setup and I had to leave a lot of my stuff when I moved here including that car. And the reason for me to do a coil gun instead of an airsoft is because I think coil guns are dope. So I started off with making the coil and when I was done I hooked things up and did this quick test. Now the next thing to do was to make something that moves the coil up down and left right. And for that motion the first thing that came to my mind was uh, some controller. I had this thing for a long time so I thought maybe I could just replicate the design with some changes. But when I disassembled it I realized that there were just too many parts to deal with and it's gonna be really hard to recreate with what I have now. So I just had to think of something else. I made some sketches aiming for a simpler design that does the same thing then I got a bit more specific and made a model to visualize how the finished thing should look like. And this is how it looked like. Now I wanted to see how it looks like on the car and if the structure stays in shape because the ring was just too skinny and I didn't think about it when I was designing it so I just had to test it out. Okay so now the capacitors are charged to 200 volts and now I'm just gonna trigger it and let's just see how it goes so that went well but the capacitors were charged to 200 volts instead of 450. The next thing to do was to use servos to actually control it. Okay so now I just connected a servo to the uh, x-axis and it does work with the uh, remote which I want to show you. That was working well but it was just to see if I could use push rods to make it work. So I was just thinking about making a setup like this but it just doesn't want to work. It just doesn't go any more than that. I could have used one of these push rods to make the whole thing work, but I didn't want to spend any money and wanted to make things simpler, so I didn't do it. So I redesigned some of the parts and made this. This new design is a lot more modular, has less moving parts, and overall just simple. The next thing to do was to make something that holds the capacitors and I thought putting them on the side would be a good idea. So I did some sketches, made the parts and put things together. Now the weight was obviously an issue. It was just leaning forward and the bottom of it was touching the ground. So I made a new part, it's taller and thicker. It did solve the clearance problem and made the wheel space from 2.5 to 3. And with that out of the way, the next thing to do was to order some parts and start to actually put things together. By the way, I also got some battery capacity indicators because I thought it would be cool to see the capacitors getting charged. But the way I wanted to do it was dumb and that didn't make it to the final project. Anyway, after messing with the components, testing if things work together and planning how am I going to do the wire 
wiring. We also have to think about the batteries. So I drove to Food Lion to get them and they didn't have the normal ones. They had the optimum ones, which are a bit more pricey and they claim to have a bit more power and life. Shouldn't all double batteries be the same? So I came back home, looked at the data sheet, um, you know, one of these things, and it appears to be somewhat true. So I ordered a small pack and tested it out. The normal one does 5 amps at 1.64 volts, and the optimum one does 5.4 amps at 1.72 volts. So I guess the claim is true. Then I got some more batteries, and I had 24 of those. <sighs> Alright, so now the first battery pack is done and I just have to do the same thing with the other one and then put them in series and that will be it okay so now the new battery pack is done <laughs> more than 20 amps and it does about 20.5 volts. Now the problem with the first battery pack was it's 20 volts. When I plugged that in and turned it on, the EC did not calibrate the motors. I was a bit worried because when I turned on the transmitter, I still didn't hear any beep. The servers were working fine, but the rear motors were not. I looked at the user manual and thought maybe it's the volt. So I hooked up a buck module and slowly turned down the voltage. At 13.5, it did make beeps. So yeah, I guess I just have to make some changes with the uh, battery pack. Then basically I had to make a new battery pack that doesn't exceed 13.5 volts. I know the battery pack looks a bit um, complicated, but it's just two packs of eight AA batteries in series and both of them are just connected in parallel. This battery pack made everything work the way I wanted it to, but it didn't make it to the final project. You see the tolerance where the battery goes in is really tight, so I just had to kind of bend it a little and kind of squish that in. And that was a bad idea because some of the legs from the capacitors poked through the batteries and that made some liquids come out of it and it got really hot and it basically died. So I had to make a third battery pack with used normal batteries. It has two more cells, it's a bit heavier and doesn't deliver nearly as much current as the older one. Anyway, with that out of the way, the next thing to do was to make the trigger and the charging switch. Originally, I was thinking about using a relay for the charging switch, but the way I want to do it was dumb and if I wanted to stay on that idea it would have led me to buy new components so I didn't do it and for the trigger I was planning to use one of these electronic switches but it had some continuity on the other end so it didn't work with the thyristor so I had to think of something else I used the third channel which only does this and glued a switch to the servo and made a servo switch. The right one is there for the trigger and the left one is for charging the capacitors. At this point I was like 90% done for the project but the thyristor started misbehaving. It basically started to shoot by itself after charging for a while without using the trigger. Oh god. I tried to make it work by flipping some connections but then this happened. And when I checked it with my multimeter, it was showing continuity, so it basically died. Then I ordered a new one, did the wiring in the same way, and this time it worked perfectly. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> yeah, it still works. In three, two, one. And by the way, at the middle of all of that, one of the capacitors from the charging circuit started to smoke. It was expected because it's rated for 390 and I cranked it all the way up to 800 volts. To fix it, I soldered a new capacitor with the same voltage reading and it was working fine. And by the way, these are the project tiles that were used. And uh, yeah, that's about it. That was the coil gun on a RC car project. There was a lot for me to learn from this because I never used this many modules and stuff on a single thing so it was quite an experience all right uh thank you for watching and i'll just see you guys in the next one peace out